I'd like to see the text centered, so I'll go to the block category and choose Text Align Center and see what that looks like. I'll need to move my dialog box down and that looks just fine. And I'll click OK. It's time for me to put in an image. I'll press the return key and I'll get ready to put an image right in this center position. The picture I'm looking for is called group.jpg. I'll drag that in and I'll put in some alternative text and I'll type in the cast of characters period. And now my picture is in place. Next I'd like to apply some custom colors to my links. So I'll go over to the right hand side where my CSS panel is. I'll create a new rule and note, for the first time, I'm going to use something called the Compound Selector. This is where the A selectors reside. I'm going to start off with the A link, which is the default setting for the links. I'll click OK, and now I get to choose the colors for my links. I'll choose a bright orange for the default color. I'll hit the Apply button and I can see it take effect right away. Now I also want my links to have no underline, so I'll choose None. And I'll hit Apply again to see what that looks like. Next I want some space between each one of my links, so I'll go to the Box Category and I'll add some padding to the right and the left. I'll uncheck Same for All and maybe I'll put 15 on the right hand and 15 on the left hand and I'll hit the apply button and now they're nicely distributed. I'll click OK and my links are set. Now the default links are set to orange but I still need to set the other links so I'll create a new rule and I'll once again go to compound and this time I'll choose the visited links. Now I can style these. I'll go to color and maybe I just want these to be a dark gray, no underline. I'll go to the box category, take off the padding, same for all, and add 15 to the right and 15 to the left. I'll hit apply and OK. I'm going to go to the next rule and add the compound selector called A hover. This is the rollover. Maybe I want my rollovers to be a bright green. No underline. I'll go to the box category. Right 15, left 15, and click OK. That's the rollover. And finally, the last one. I'll go to compound. I'll choose active. This represents the color that will appear when the user presses down on the link. So let's say I want this to be a bright purple. No underline, go to the box category and set the spacing and the spacing on the right and the left. I'll hit the OK button. I'm going to save my work, file save, and I'll test this in a browser and I can see right away I have rollover colors and when I click down it turns to purple and after I've clicked on it and gone to that page it turns to gray. So now I can tell that my links are working perfectly. And I'll close my browser window and return to Dreamweaver. In addition to my hypertext links, I'd also like to create an image map with this picture right here. So I'll go down to my Properties Inspector and I'll put in a name where it says Map. I'll just type in the word Group. 
Down here are my hotspot tools and I'll begin with the circle hotspot tool. Choosing that, I'll go draw a circle right on Dorothy's face. And this will create a hotspot that will be clickable in the image. You'll notice that it asks for alternative text and I'll go ahead and put that in right now. Right here it asks for some alternative text and I'll type in the words link to Dorothy, make sure that goes in right, to Dorothy Page, period. And right in here, I'll put in the address for that page, which is simply Dorothy.htm. Double check that spelling. Dorothy, once again, Dorothy.htm, and that's perfect. Now if I need to move my hotspot around a little bit, I can grab that arrow tool and move it around to position it just where I want it to be. Typically I like to click away and reselect the picture for my next hotspot. Next I'll use the rectangle tool and I'm going to make a hotspot for the Tin Man. Now I don't want to spill over here onto the lion, so I'll just use the upper part of his body as the hotspot. Again, I'll put in some alternative text and I'll say link to Tin Man page, period. And this page will go to tinman.htm. Now I'm ready to show you how to use the Polygon Hotspot tool. I'm going to move my Properties panel over a little bit so I can get to my Scarecrow right here. I have the Polygon Hotspot tool selected and I'm just going to start clicking all around. Oh, it's not going to let me until I put in some alternative text. I'll go ahead and do that. I'll choose Link to Scarecrow page, period. And now I'll go back to my hotspot tool and I'll create a shape. And I don't have to worry about being too precise. I'm not going to make an insane number of points for this shape. Just a sensible number of points. And then if I need to make any adjustments to any one of the points, I'll grab the arrow tool and I can adjust these points to really cover the entire outline of his body. Maybe I'll bring it out a little bit in here. Very good. And now I'll make a link to the Scarecrow page. Dot HTM. And once again, I'll click away from the picture and select the picture again. And I'll pick the Polygon Hotspot tool again. It's going to want some alternative text. Link to Lion page, period. And now I can continue with my hotspot. And adjust my hotspot with my arrow. And this doesn't have to be all that precise. Good enough. I'll set the link. It's going to go to lion.htm. I'm going to save my work and test this in a browser. Now, as I move over these hotspot areas, you can see that my cursor turns into a finger with, with which I can click.